Good morning, everybody. I call you blessed in the name of Jesus. Pastor Rick here for another episode of 714 Prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Remember that. Always make a choice to, re to rejoice. You can never go wrong with doing that. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, verse 14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. My goodness, I mean, we've said this many times, but I can say it again with great conviction. Our land needs some serious healing right about now. Amen? But not only our land, so do we as people. And part of that issue is that we don't recognize who we are in Christ. That we are created as a three-part being, as a spirit, soul, and body. And I made a statement in uh, yesterday's um, 714 time together that we, you have to walk in the spirit, you need to crucify the flesh, and you must defend your soul. You know, in regards to walking in the spirit, if you want to walk in the spirit, then you have to be obedient to the word of God. Crucifying the flesh, though, that's a whole, that's a whole nother enchilada altogether, isn't it? Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 through 25 says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust, or the passions and desires. And if we live in the Spirit, then let us also walk in the Spirit. So you see, crucifying the flesh is very much a, an element of walking in the Spirit. And it says that those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its desires and with its passions. We have to crucify the flesh. Our flesh has to die in order for us to be able to walk in the Spirit. And that's not so easy, though, you know, crucifying the flesh. The flesh is, a part, is that part of us that resists the transformation of that metamorphosis of becoming a new creation. It's that thing that resists us transforming into a new person in Christ. And since this is the case, the devil wants to use the pleasures of our flesh, the desires of our life, to keep us enslaved to old habits and to keep us enslaved to sinful attitudes. He doesn't want us to renew. He doesn't want us to become the new creation that we are. He doesn't want us to live the life that we're born to live. And we have to daily make daily choices to live according to God's righteous desires. We have to make daily choices to deny the sinful natures, nature. And when we use our power to choose God's way instead of sin's way, that's a part of crucifying our flesh. And granted, we do it by the power of the Holy Spirit, but we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice. And when we make a decision, when we have the power of choice to choose God's way instead of sin's way, that's one of the greatest elements of crucifying the flesh. And God helps us crucify our flesh through the Holy Spirit so that we can live in the newness of the Spirit and live the new life and live the life we're born to live. So if you want to walk in the Spirit, then you have to be obedient to the Word of God. And you have to remember that, that, be, that we who are in Christ have crucified the flesh, have crucified that part of us that goes to the old desires and the old passions, and we walk in the Spirit because we live in the Spirit. So... Uh, crucifying the flesh is a big part of it. It's not the easiest part, but it does have its great rewards in our life. So just wanted to leave that food th for thought with you this morning. Uh, I know, crucify the flesh, that's a great thought, right? <laughs> but trust me, it'll be a blessing to your life. Let me pray with you for a minute. Father, I thank you for this day, uh, this day to serve you, this day to come into your presence. What a beautiful Saturday we have before us. Thank you for the beautiful day that we had yesterday on Friday, Lord. We just uh, see your glory in uh, all that's going on in, in the world around us in terms of the summertime coming and you know spring in full bloom. and It's just a wonderful thing, Lord. We ask for your grace for us all for this journey through the political chaos, the, the economic struggle, the jockeying for power, positions and all the stuff that's going on in the political landscape, Lord. It can be so 
disconcerting and it can be so unsettling. We ask for your grace <clears throat> upon our leaders, Lord Jesus, for your power to be there to guide them and to lead them through um, tumultuous times, Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask for those that would stand in opposition to you, who stand in power, Lord, may they may they be silenced. Uh, we ask just ask for your grace to bring victory to the to the to the scene. Lord, I do recognize that we're in the end times and that we're in the end days, and and I do recognize, Lord, that there's going to be an an escalation of Antichrist spirit, but I ask you, Lord, to give us the grace for that journey. Help us to be your disciples that are willing to walk in the spirit, are willing to crucify the flesh, and are willing to d defend our soul, our mind. But we need your grace, we need your power, we need your presence to even imagine doing it. So we ask, I ask for that, for us to have the grace for that journey, Lord. For all uh, of those uh, of those of us, Lord, who face are facing difficulties and troubles in life, we thank you that you help us through all of those things. You hold our hand, you hold us close, you embrace us, and you help us through every storm. In fact, it's in the midst of the storms that you are so ever present, and it's in the midst of the darkness that you are the closest. You've told us that you're an ever present help in time of trouble. I ask as well that you give us the grace to remember that, Lord, that even in the most troubling times, there you are, and especially in the troubling times, there you are. I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. It means so much to me, and I know it means so much to everyone else. I call my friends, my brothers and sisters, my family, my, all of our church attenders, those watching these videos, I just pray, Lord, that your blessings be upon them. Peace be with them, Lord God, that your grace be with them, Lord, uh, and they may experience and sense your presence throughout the day, Lord. I just call them blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for hooking up with me in these 714 prayers. We're still seeing somewhere between, I don't know, 40 and 70 people that uh, view the uh, morning video every day. And I'm okay with that. I think that's a great thing. Uh, and uh, so I thank you for, for checking in. I know the grace of the Lord will be with you. His peace will be with you. Miss Diane and I love you. Uh, we miss you. We are still prayerfully considering what the timeline is for, uh, for coming back. I want to do it with wisdom, and I want to do it with the right timing. Uh, I pray that you all be, will be patient in that process and just trust us to make the right decision. I know I'm asking you, I'm asking a lot of you. Um, but uh, I know God will give you grace for that journey as well. Amen. Listen, I pray that you just have a, a, an amazing day. This is going to be a beautiful Saturday, and let's just enjoy it and live life to the fullest and live the life you were born to live. Keep your nose in the book, keep your knees bent to heaven, and stay connected to the body of Christ. I call you blessed in Jesus' name.